Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, question eight from the 2020 paper. A rectangle is inscribed in a circle of radius five units and center is zero, zero as shown below. Let OR be the point X, Y, uh, be the vertex of the rectangle in the first quadrant as shown and vertex being a corner. Let theta be the angle between O, OR and the positive X axis where naught is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to pi over two. Okay. The point or x, y can be written as a cos theta b sine theta, where a and b is an element of or. Find the value of a and the value of b. Okay, so when I see this, it reminds me of the unit circle. So let me go back to the unit circle. And the unit circle is, is called this because it has a radius of one. OK, and it is showing you that any point can be written as, in theory, A cos A. I would say A sine A, but the book is, or this question is saying B sine A. Um, where A and B is the radius, it's the length of the radius. OK, and it's always that, because if you think about any point on the circumference of that circle, it's a radius out from the centre. OK, um, so I'm going to show you in a minute where that comes from uh, and how it ties into the radius. Um, that's where these points all come from. OK, so one would be cos of zero degrees is one, sine zero degrees is zero. OK, so that's where that point one zero comes from. Zero one on the unit circle would come from one being the radius, cos 90 degrees. And that will give me zero, sine 90 degrees will give me one. And so on, so forth, all the way around. Okay, so that's, this is what this question reminds me of when I see it. Um, so now I need to show that the, the, this generic point x, y can always be written as a cos th theta, where b sine theta. Okay. Um, so let's do this one. So I would say based on what I've said, that or being the point x, y can be written as five cos theta, five sine theta, where five equals the radius of the circle. Now, I'd like to prove that to you though, rather than just uh, you take my word for it, okay? So what you do is, and this is why they're limited to the first quadrant and so on and so forth, I want to redraw out this triangle here, okay? If it'll let me, so it's this triangle here that I'm looking at. So let me draw that one. There's my angle theta. And this is the side five. Okay, so if I'll, if I find the length x out from it, that's here, if that's okay. And this is how far we go up on the y-axis. So this is the distance up because this point is not naught, okay? So the length of this line here is whatever value this is. And of course, the length of this line here is whatever my y coordinate is up here, okay? Because the starting point for both is zero, zero. So then if we write it in, in terms of cos and sine, like this is telling us to do, uh, cos theta, so silly old Harry caught a herring trawling off America. Cos theta would be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so x over five. OK, or to write it in terms of X, I could say 5 cos theta is equal to X. OK, and in a similar way, I'm going to say sine theta 
is equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So it's equal to y over five. Bring up the five, five sine theta is equal to y, okay? And that's why those numbers that comes before sine and cos is always the radius because the radius is the hypotenuse of your triangles. Remember, we always form a right angled triangle with the x-axis, okay? So it's always going to be um, the hypotenuse or the radius, okay? So I hope that makes sense. So what, what I'm doing down here now is I'm gonna fill in for that x and y that I found five cos theta, five sine theta, which is down here. Okay, so therefore in this question then, A is equal to five, B is equal to five. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Part two, show that A of theta the angle of the rectangle measured in square units can be written as A of theta equal to 50 sine two theta. Okay, well, I don't see how it can be written like that just yet, but let's start here. So area of a rectangle is equal to length, length by breadth, length by width, whatever you want to call it. which in our rectangle, if I'm calling him X, it uh, would be two X, can you see that? And if I called him Y, it would be two Y. Okay, so for me, it's two X multiplied by two Y. Okay, only because I defined X here in terms of that right angle triangle. Okay, so my X then, so from before, X is equal to five cos theta and Y is equal to five sine theta. Okay, how these get remembered is Christian name, surname. So that tends to be the way uh, you remember them, which one comes first, cause or sign. So your name is Christian name, surname. Okay, so cause, sign, so X, Y. Um, okay, so my X is five cause theta and my Y is five sine theta. So let's sub into here. So I have two times five cause theta by two times five sine theta. So 10 cos theta by 10 sine theta. So that's equal to 100 cos theta sine theta. Okay, so that's the area. 100 cos theta sine theta. Okay, I need to make it look like 50 sine theta. Okay, so I need it to look like 50 sine two theta, okay? So I've cos theta sine theta, this is sine two theta. So what you do then is you come off to the trig identities pages that's here and you're looking for a sine two theta, okay? And these are written in terms of, of A and B. So you're looking for sine two A. So there's a sine two A. So let me write down these. So I have sine two a, if you're okay, I'm going to write it as sine two theta equal to two sine theta cos theta. And I have another one, uh, sine, sine two theta equal to, what is that? Two tan theta over one tan squared theta. Okay, so I, I don't have tens in, in the here, so I'm going to discard this one and I'm going to try and work with this one. Okay, so sine two theta is the same as two sine theta cos theta. Okay, so let me take my 100 
cars theta sine theta. Let me divide it by two sine theta cars theta. This and see how many sine two thetas have I. Okay. So that's going to cancel. So I'm going to get 50. So I have 50 sine two thetas. Okay, so therefore the area of theta, area in terms of theta can be written as 50 sine two theta. Okay, so use the identities if you've worked your way through it and it's it's sine cos or tan in a different format, you can use those pages of identities in your log tables to rewrite them in a different format. Okay, use calculus then to show the rectangle with maximum area is a square. Show calculus to show that the area with maximum area is a square. Maximum area. So area is equal to 50 sine 2 theta. So I'm going to differentiate area. And the only variable here is theta, the angle. So it must be with respect to theta. So let's uh, differentiate this dude. So 50 sine goes to, is it cos or minus cos? Let me have a look. So sine goes to cos. So 50 cos to theta, it is chained. 2 theta in itself can be differentiated. Uh, you'd get 2, so you must multiply it by 2. OK, so when it's more than just sine theta, when there's a number here, it's a chain. So you end up differentiating this bit as well and multiplying it. So I'm getting 100 cos 2 theta for da d, d theta. OK, so at min max, um, dy dx or, or f dash x, however you want to call it, for r1, it's da d theta is equal to zero. So therefore, we let 100 cos 2 theta equal to zero. And we are going to try and solve. OK, so I'm going to come up here now. So I have 100 cos 2 theta being equal to zero. Divide across by 100. So I have cos 2 theta being equal to zero. Let's get the cos inverse of both sides so that I have 2 theta being equal to cos inverse of 0. Half pi. OK, the reason I'm using pi is because they use radian measure for angle at the start, okay? So I tend to try and keep it to whatever it says in the question. So a half pi. Now, as it turns out, it won't make much difference to your answer. I don't know that you would lose any marks. Um, I'm solving for theta, so let's divide across by two. So a half divided by two is a quarter. So a quarter pi, or you, of course you can write it as pi over four. Quarter pi and pi over four is the same thing. Okay, so use calculus to show the that the rectangle with maximum area is a square. Okay, so if it's a square, then the length is equal to the breadth. Or for us, remember we said it was 2x was equal to 2y. So we had 2 times 5 cos theta being equal to two times five sine theta over this side. Let's sub in our theta. So it's cos pi over four equal to five sine pi over four. And if it's a square, then these are going to be the same as each other. So two bracket five cos uh, pi over four. I'm getting five root two for him. And then let me just go back and change the cos to a sine. Yeah, and I'm getting 5 root 2. So therefore, uh, max area equals square. 
Okay. So just explain again, that's that question done to explain what I did. Okay. So I um, we 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 used calculus to find the angle that gives us the maximum area. And you will find this by letting dA d theta equal to zero. So we know that when theta is equal to pi over four, we get the maximum area for that rectangle. Then using that maximum angle, we figured out, are the lengths the same? Is, is x equal to y? And because they are, you can say then that it's a square. Okay. Well, concluded otherwise, um, if you just found uh, theta to be 45 degrees or pi over four or whatever, and you said, um, if your angle from the center to the corner of your quadrilateral is 45 degrees, it must be a square or do you need to find side lengths? No, I think you'd be perfect. You'd be absolutely perfect. So what you're doing is more, ge 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 you're just using geometry basically and angles to show that it's also a rectangle. So that is perfect. Um, now, let me go back to the diagram for a second. If it's going to be, do you need to show that they're all 45? To well, show that the if, sides if one of them are the 45, same. they're all going to be 45, wouldn't it? Because they're all on, they're, it'll be six. They're all five. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think as long as you quoted the, the theorems to back you up, you'll be fine. Okay, rather than just showing that that single 45 degrees and, and just keep writing about it. But yes, is the answer to that. Okay, just back it up with theorems and, and just write it, write a mini essay. Okay, but yeah, perfectly acceptable way of doing it. Okay, this is the bit that was key that you used calculus and you knew min max. Okay, and then you can draw your conclusions after that. Yeah, that's a cool way. I didn't even think of doing it that way. That's cool. Okay, find the maximum area. Um, find the maximum area. Okay, so going by the way I did it, I would do length by breadth, okay? I'm gonna do this two ways now, just to back up the two methods that we've just spoken about in the last one. Okay, so I would do five root two by five root two. And if I could spell, okay, um, five, five is 25 by two. So 50 units squared is what I'm getting for the maximum area. Okay, and I can do this because I found out that the length and the breadth is five root twos. Okay, now, I suppose the other way of doing it, if you hadn't done this part, was to go back to area being 50 sine two theta. Okay, and we know that max area occurs when theta is equal to uh, pi over four. Okay, so sub in your pi over four here into your area formula, and it will naturally give you the, um, the biggest area. So two times pi over four, and I would expect to get the same angle now for this, two bracket uh, pi over four. Yeah, so 50 units squared again. Okay, and this way that I've written down here in blue is the traditional way of doing it with calculus. You, you use max min to find the maximum variable, and then you tend to take that maximum variable that you found or the variable that gives you the max and sub it back into the original, okay? So that's the traditional question that gets asked. Okay, so either way, would we'll do this one. Okay, part B then. A person who is two meters tall is walking towards a street light of height five meters at a speed of 1.5 meters per second. Find the rate in meters per second at which the length of the person's shadow X cast by the street light is changing. Okay. So rates of change. Okay, so find the rate in meters per second at which the length of the person's shadow is changing. Okay, and, and they've told us that the length of the person's shadow is X. 
So we need to find dx dt. When you're asked to find a rate of change, okay, rates of change is normally with respect to time. OK, unless they actually um, specify that there's a relationship between two variables and one is changing because of another. But when they just say find the rate of change, it's with respect to time. OK, so that's what we've defined. We've defined a dx dt. OK, so dx dt equals. So if, if anybody's watched any of my work, you'll know I'll always start it by that. OK, so. Our rates of change questions we normally get in um, indirectly by breaking it into the sum of two parts. OK, now I, I don't know what goes here and here yet. I know it will be the same. Um, it will be the same variable uh, because in theory they cancel and I'm left with just DT, DX DT as you can see there. OK, but I need to figure out what these are. Um, OK. So let's have a look now. A person who is two meters tall is walking towards a street light of height five meters at a speed of 1.5 meters per second. Okay. Okay, so so anytime I see speed um in in a in a question like this, it, it can be two things. It could be distance, speed, and time, and, and therefore it becomes a calculus question, or it could be um dad silly triangle. Okay. So distance, speed and time, yes, or I should have said, sorry, distance, speed, acceleration. That was the other one from physics. So distance, speed and time. So speed then would be equal to distance over time. OK, so if something is changing at a speed, on the bottom I have a dt, and at the top I have the rate of change of distance. So a person who is two meters tall is walking towards a street light at a speed, okay? So the distance that's changing then is this distance L. Okay, so, so I think it's a DL DT and a DL DT would go in here. So now let me see if I can find DX DL to fit in here. So I'm gonna use the diagram then for this one. OK, and I'm going to play with similar triangles. OK, when I have one triangle embedded in another one, similar triangles could come into play. Um, so let me draw out those true triangles and, and show you what I'm thinking. So there's the big triangle. This one here. And then let's draw the little one. which is this one here. So let's write in the dimensions. You're an X, you're a two, you're five, and you are an L plus X. Okay, and the theorem on similar triangles, the sides are in proportion. So let's go five. This side corresponds to this side because of course our right angles are here. So they're all nicely aligned. So five over two is the same as L plus X over X. So their sides are in proportion. So however many times bigger this side is to this one, which is what I've written here, then this side is that many times bigger than this side. That's what that theorem tells you. Okay, let's cross multiply and see if we can solve this. So five by X, so there's my cross multiply. Five by X is the same as two times L plus X, or five X is equal to two L plus two X. Let's bring over the two X, five X minus two X is equal to two L, or three X is equal to two L. Okay, now what did I need here? A DX DL, okay, and I have an X and an L here. So let's write this in terms of X on the top. So that will be two thirds L. Okay. So what is the rate of change of X and L? What is the relationship between them? Well, X is equal to two thirds L. Okay. So therefore you can say that the relationship between, sorry, X and L 
is two thirds. So for every unit you go up in X, you go up two thirds in L. Okay, so therefore he's a DL and he's a DL. Okay, um, so now let's keep going. So DX, DL then in that case is two thirds. The speed DLDT, I never wrote in the speed, it was 1.5. So DLDT is equal to 1.5. Let's put them into our calculators. So 2 over 3 by 1.5 is 1. So dx dt is equal to 1. And back up here looking for units, meters per second. Okay, so the rate of change of that shadow is a meter every second. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.